Welcome to the American Institute of Healthcare Professionals videogram on crisis intervention counseling. Crisis intervention is an important type of counseling that looks to help individuals find a pre-crisis state of mind. So with crisis, we see situations where an individual experiences severe trauma. Maybe that severe trauma is due to a sudden death uh, maybe it's a suicide that they just learned about or a tragic accident. Uh, it could be an act of nature, such as a hurricane that just destroyed someone's home or a tornado. It could be a sudden financial loss, such as when the Great Depression occurred, people lost all of their life savings and so forth. It could be a divorce or individuals find themselves in crisis when they are dealing with multiple losses in a short span of time. It's the purpose of crisis intervention to assess these situations and to bring the individual back to a pre-crisis uh, mindset. So in crisis, the, the biggest thing that counselors have to worry about is individuals are shocked and confused because of the, because of the immense nature of uh, the event itself and also it's so massive, maybe a hurricane blowing a house away and, and stuff that individuals just feel completely helpless. So there's a shocked and confused state of mind as well as a helpless state of mind. So crisis intervention looks to return individuals, as I said, to a pre-crisis state of mind. It helps individuals during that process to express their concerns. It is also a period where to give guidance and advice to help the individual set up some type of recovery and to divert the individual during this period of crisis from making any dangerous or destructive uh, decisions that might come into their mind. And then later helping them have the support they need in follow-up and so forth. And in doing so here, I wanna look at two types of models that crisis interventionists use. First one is the ACT model. The ACT model looks at first uh, analyzing the lethality and the imminent danger that the person might be in or the state of mind that they might be in. So usually uh, this is covered through a suicide assessment of some type. And then the second part is to form some type of relationship with the individual in terms of being able to help them. Identifying the issues, encouraging expression of emotions in reaction to those issues, and then discussing solutions and healthy coping strategies. And all of this eventually leads to a restoration of functioning through an implementation of a plan to the crisis itself. Of course, nothing is fixed on the first day. Uh, once the person is returned to a pre crisis state, they're going to need to have follow-up and they're going to need to have plans for the following days to fix the problem that occurred through its various implementations. Uh, another one that crisis interventionists use is called SAFER-R, and it's very similar to ACT. Uh, you have the, the process of stabilizing the situation, acknowledging the problem, facil facilitating understanding, encouraging adaptive coping strategies to re and to restore functioning after that. And then finally, the R, the second R stands for to refer to a professional or to be later seen again. So these are all of the same principles that we see in crisis intervention, to stabilize the situation, to help the individual process the thing that just occurred, to give them better coping uh, ideas to help them uh, develop better coping strategies to restore to some type of pre-crisis state of mind, and then to always have a plan and a referral later. So that's the basics of crisis intervention. Uh, for those who are considering becoming certified in crisis intervention, uh, many individuals can earn this certification and apply it in a variety of areas. Crisis call centers, first responders, such as fire and EMT, pastoral caregivers, obviously, professional counselors who are already licensed might want to also have a certification that deals particularly with crisis. Uh, social workers would fall under that same uh, umbrella. Uh, any type of suicide prevention. And in this day and age, 
It is more important than ever with the current social crisis in policing that de-escalation is applied when there are random traffic stops or when uh, the police are called to a domestic disturbance. Uh, the police have to be able to de-escalate the situation and understand when a mental uh, problem is uh, exhibiting itself so that the officer has the training and the ability to bring the person to a, uh, a pre-crisis state of mind. So this training is especially important for police, obviously. If you are uh, interested in our particular crisis intervention program, uh, Dr. Shear teaches most of the courses. He's a licensed counselor, but also uh, a, has a doctorate in psychology and he works uh, in our program. He designed most of our courses for the actual program. Uh, the program is online and independent study. Uh, it's uh, suited best for qualified professionals uh, within the counseling sphere who have maybe an undergraduate degree in psychology or counseling, or even those in health. And we also accept those who work, who might have a different undergraduate degree, but who work as first responders or who work in crisis centers. Uh, the program, after completion of the required courses, leads to a four-year certification in crisis intervention. Uh, our program links are below uh, for uh, the courses and the certification information itself in crisis intervention. And below that is also a request for information link. If you would like to contact us directly, you can do so at 330-652-7776. Again, that's 330-652-7776. And our email is info at AIHCP.org. Again, that's info at AIHCP.org. CP.org. So if you're interested in helping individuals uh, overcome severe trauma, initial trauma of, of a crisis, of a situation that just occurs and they're unable to uh, respond to that and you want to help them get back to a pre-crisis state of mind uh, right on the scene, well, the crisis intervention program might be something you want to consider taking to add to your professional resume. Uh, I'd like to thank you today for listening and for the time spent. Uh, have a great day.